Former President Goodluck Jonathan has admonished politicians contesting elections and political parties to eschew violence ahead of the 2023 general election. According to the ex-president, Nigeria must exist before it can have another president. Uh, calling on elective position seekers to protect the most populous black nation from being destroyed, Jonathan noted that those interested in becoming president, governors and legislators have roles to play in preserving the nation's democracy. The former Nigerian leader also mentioned hate speech and propaganda as posing the biggest threat to Nigeria's democracy and appeal to Nigerians not to engage in such. Well, joining us live to discuss this is Najib Bello. He is a political analyst and comrade Obanago Ibrahim is a youth advocate and a security expert. It's good to have you join us, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for having me, Miriam. Mr. Obanago, it's good to have you join us. Can you hear me? Great. Um, I'll start with you because you are you run a youth um, focused organization, and half the time when we talk about violence or um, ballot box snatching or any kind of you know situation during, before, and after elections, young people are mostly you know the ones who are involved in that. So let me ask: Why do you think we're having? Uh, a huge number of young people involved in these areas of violence, especially when it comes to electoral, uh, electoral offenses. I don't think that you can hear me, Mr. Banago, so I'm, I'm just going to come to you, Najib. Like I just said, too many young people engage in this. I don't see my dad running with of a course. ballot box so. Mm -hmm my great uncle running with a ballot box or even trying to beat people up at you know, an, an election polling unit. Mm. But the, the, there seems to be a growing, and it's not just in Nigeria, we see it around Africa. Of course, I, I wanted to mention yes, that. Yes, why is that, a, a, th why do we keep seeing young people um, you know, perpetrating these acts of violence? Uh, in terms of Africa, a lot of our young people make up the majority of uh, the population that participates in elections. So they are very much interested. Of course, with youth comes energy also. You, like you said, you won't see your dad running around trying to snatch a ballot box or fight somebody. And unfortunately, in Nigeria, in most of Africa, a lot of the young people, not, let me not say a lot, but definitely some volume of young people are not gainfully employed. So it's easier for someone, for some politician to go to them and say, uh, have this money, go and disrupt this, go and snatch that, or go and beat up these people. So if um, look at the different, look at different regions, different countries, the richer those countries are, the more employed the youth population is, the less you will see people go to maybe uh, Abu Dhabi, okay, they don't elect over there, maybe um, Liechtenstein or all of those countries that have high GDP per capita, it's difficult for you to see young people being used to go and snatch ballot boxes, fight people during elections. So I think it's unemployment, is youthful exuberance sometimes, then um, the fact that youths are the most people engaged in election activities. Mm. These are some of the things that, that make um, them to be the ones that carry out these things. However, I think with more information, with more gainful employment, with even the politicians talking more positively about the elections, we will have a reduction in these things. So let's talk about the weaponization of poverty, which we have mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, Many would many have argued that if you are hungry, then you would try to go in a different direction as opposed to allowing those who have kept you in that position to continuously, you know, use you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you talked about more information. We see a lot of people having these conversations. Um, you enter into an Uber, the taxi driver is having that conversation. Yes. You're in a bus, mm -hmm. somebody's having a conversation. These conversations are had, but then in what context? I think that's the question. Yes. Well, how do we tailor these conversations at their level, to their level? Because again, mm -hmm. let's take, for example, the NSAS situation. We also saw young people who came against the people who were saying, let's put an end to bad governance. Let's yes. put an end to police brutality. So 
How do we tailor these conversations? Because this is, we're talking about the civic space here. How do we tailor these conversations so that the information can be put out there positively? So I, I feel that, like um, President Goodluck Jonathan has said, the politicians themselves have to be directly engaging their followers. Because what we see is there's information out there, sometimes it's fake news, sometimes it's propaganda. We see this especially on social media, we see this in different circles. But when the words are coming directly from the participants, the politicians, the candidates, and they are telling their followers, don't do this, don't engage in that, we don't, we don't see a lot of it coming from these candidates. I've seen, okay, at least one candidate tell his followers to be less um, aggressive, you know, but other candidates have to come consistently, like we saw with uh, Good Luck Jonathan during his last, um, the last elections he participated in. He came out to tell people, my ambition is not worth anybody's blood. So if you are going to harm anybody, don't say it's because of me. And that's what we need to be seeing directly from the politicians so that information is not mixed up, mm. so that someone is not saying something somewhere else that is different from what another person... If you are hearing it from the presidential candidates, you are hearing it from the governorship candidates, their followers are more settled to obey them mm. than any other information you or I could be telling them. Mm. Interesting. Uh, I, I think uh, we have Comrade Obanago again with us. Comrade, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Perfect. Now, I, I said at the beginning that I know that you run an organi organi organization that is youth-focused. Uh, and, and, and we see that most of the perpetrators of these acts of violence are young people. What is the target? Uh, what, what is the focus of your youth mobilization? And what kinds of information are you putting out there? And what are you feeding them with as, a, as, as we're preparing for another election cycle? Thank you. God bless you. Comrade, can you hear me? Uh, I think that we're having a problem with the comrade. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you louder. Okay. Go ahead, comrade. I, I, we're listening. Oh, well, unfortunately, his, yes, his connection is pretty bad. Anyway, um, the reason why we keep having these conversations on the civic space and talking about different things is so that people can catch on. Yes. But then the reality is that not everybody has cable TV. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can watch TV at all. Yes. And we notice that the people who show up for elections, for example, when I was in Anambra for the governorship elections, the people who showed up early to the polling units were not you and I. They were not the middle class guys. Mm -hmm. They were the guys who need government the most, the guys at the grassroots level. How much information do you think is out there in the Nigerian space, whether it be from the NOA, from political parties who, the own, who are the owners of voter education, mm -hmm. and INEC, who's also overstretched? What, how much information do you think is out um, there? From INEC, we are not getting enough information from INEC. Uh, I wish they could do more. From National Orientation Agency, <laughs> I, I, I don't think we are getting any Are they decent. still in existence? I'm just curious. They are, but their role has, uh, you know, just fizzled out gradually and we don't get much Do you from think them. that that's deliberate? I'm, I'm not in any way trying to be Honestly, funny. Honestly, the, the National Orientation Agency, the, the last time I saw them being uh, vibrant was about maybe 2012, 2013. Uh, since since 2015, I've not really seen them trying to get people to modify their thinking, make them, you know, more positively minded. I've not seen much from the national. I'm even surprised you mentioned you mentioned them. To. Yeah, private media has been, you know, more in the forefront of uh, getting people to know what to do, how to do, and how to act. But then again, like I said, um, we need to see more brotherhood, more fraternity from the candidates. Uh, we, and then the kind of words they use, we need to stop, we need to, we, we have to 
participate in a way that people are not being divided along tribe, along you religion. Just took it from me because I was going to ask about the divisions, the exactly. lines that need to be we, we should not be hearing about it's this tribe that should do this, it's this tribe that did that, it's this religion that did this. We, once there is division and people are not satisfied with the way the elections go, then they will look at the other set of people and say, it's your fault. And that is where violence could occur after elections. Mm. So all those kind of terminologies, mentioning of tribes, mentioning of different groups and uh, religion, it needs but to But do stop. Nigerian politicians know any other way of politicking? Because you see, we're very quick to say, oh, these people travel to other countries. They see how they observe other elections. I mean, we've seen President Goodluck Jonathan mm -hmm. uh, be an observer, election observer, whether UN or EU. Uh, we've seen that. They see how things are done. I mean, Kenya is just around the mm -hmm, corner. Yes. We saw how the elections were planned out and then thoroughly done. Uh, so is it that is they choose not to do this, or is it because they're more convenient and comfortable in the way we've always done things? Yes, truly, it's, it's the way they've seen things work for their predecessors and perhaps themselves. They've noticed... Other ways it's done in other countries, but most times they don't see it as applying here. Like, we know a politician who started this stomach infrastructure thing, <laughs> you know. Uh, to be honest, stomach infrastructure started from somewhere very, how will I say, very helpful. It, I read some governance courses where they say if you want to encourage people to come for immunization, for health uh, information, you have to give them some benefits that will make them immediate benefits. Mm -hmm. And they took those things and just applied it to elections and say, okay, give them food, give them money. Uh, so they misapply, actually, some of the things they see abroad. Mm -hmm. And they then mix it up with their own traditional way that has worked for them, even though they know there are alternatives. But because they are not looking at the long term, they are just looking at, I want this thing done now. So that's why we keep having this same system. Although I must mention that the electorate is getting more informed, but then again, we have to separate propaganda. We have to separate um, fake news and all of that from what people should be doing and what is real and what is helpful and will achieve peace. Finally, because my guys are saying it's time to go. Okay. Um, do we see anything changing, apart from the fact that something snapped and there's a revolution of sorts, mm -hmm. but do we see anything seriously changing and seeing less and less electoral violence? And now that we know that there's no ballot box to be snatched, mm. um, do, do you see other grounds being covered to reduce the kinds of things that we saw in previous elections in closing? Mm, I think I think the way things have gone generally, when it's easier to transmit election results, then you have less um, issues of maybe ballot snatching and all. Of, so I think the way people, young people especially, the way they've organized themselves recently and the mindset that has followed them, if the channels they've created for different things they've done in the past two years from COVID to, like you said, NSAS, the positive side of NSAS, how they dis dis uh, disseminated information, organized themselves. If they go around doing that, capturing images where they are allowed to capture images, make videos, it will be easier to control the kind of crisis that could happen. Hmm. So I'm hoping that... Um, they will remember how they ran those things and they will apply some of those information, some of those technologies. And I think they will, it will be a better election than what we've well, seen. Well, all of before. that remains to be seen. We're hoping. Uh, and that all, even all of these conversations we're having will yes, get to the right ears. Exactly. Well, Najib Bela is a political analyst. We want to say thank you, Najib, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. For and uh, to Comrade Obanago, who unfortunately uh, dropped out. Thank you so much for being here. Well, that's the show tonight. Thank you all for joining us. But before I go, I would like to give you my take. Here's my take. Now, politics is a dirty game. It's a dirty means to an end.
The end of a course being that only the strongest candidates emerge victorious at the polls. There's no security in politics. Even for the elite political animals, the bell can toll on their position at any time. It is fertile grounds for scandals, power plays, and even betrayal. This raises a question. What do you do when the ground has changed under you? When all your support is gone and the wave of voices calling for you uh, in your head seems more than anyone can handle, would it not be best for you to walk away? Now, if you must resign for the sake of your party, maybe it is best. Now, the needs of many must outweigh the needs of a few. That is basic tenets of democracy. The real issue is whether any politician in this country is capable of making such a sacrifice. With all the internal party squabbles going on right now, we all should be vigilant about who is left standing after, you know, and in what manner the losers bowed out, because it will tell us much about who or where to place our trust. And that's my take. I am Mary Anakon. Have a good evening.